हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट वेलकम इन अवर थर्ड लेक्चर ऑफ दिस सी एच ए फोर नाइंटी वन इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस द आई ड्रॉप्स एंड एयर ड्रॉप्स इन दैट वी डिस्कस आई ऑइंटमेंट हाउ टू अप्लाई द आई ड्रॉप्स एंड एयर ड्रॉप्स वॉट आर द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ दैट आई ड्रॉप्स आई ड्रॉप्स एंड एयर ड्रॉप दैट पार्ट वी हैव डिस्कस इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर नाउ इन द टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस the gels and the nasal preparation so this is the content of the today's lecture definition of gels then we will see the inhalation preparation nasal preparation these three points we are going to discuss in the today's lecture the reference used for this lecture is indian pharmacopoeia volume second Seventh edition. First, we start with the gel. Here, the picture of gel is given. This gel, it is a homogeneous semi-solid preparation, usually consisting of a solution or a dispersion of one or more medicament in a suitable hydrophilic or hydrophobic base. Okay, means it is a semi-solid material. and it may contain one or more medicament okay they are intended to be applied to the skin or certain mucous membrane for protective prophylactic or therapeutic purpose hmm? which purpose we apply this gel on the skin it protect our screen prophylactic or the therapeutic purpose we are Applied to the skin. Gel may contain a suitable added substances such as antioxidant stabilizers and antimicrobial preservatives. Okay, during the manufacturing, packaging, and storage, and distribution of gel, a suitable means shall be taken to ensure their microbial qualities. Okay, so this is about the gel. If the question asked in the exam, what is gel? Then in that you have to write down all these points. Okay? Then what are the properties of this gel? Ideally, the gelling agent must be inert, safe, and cannot react with other formulation constituents. Means whatever material we use for the preparation of gel, that is nothing but the gelling agent. and they must be inert safe and cannot react with the other constituents okay then the second property is the gelling agent should be produce a sensible solid like nature at a time of the storage which is easily broken when exposed to share a force produced by a sneezing a uh, squeezing the tube trembling the bottle or at the time of a topical application means whatever gelling agent we use for the preparation the nature of that gelling agent it must be proper means during the storage the nature is solid then uh, that solid part cannot be changed by uh, process or trembling the bottle or any uh, external application the nature of that gelling agent should not be changed okay this is the one of the property it should have a suitable antimicrobial agent it must contain some suitable antimicrobial agent the topical gel must not be sticky nature must be semi solid like it not be sticky okay the ophthalmic gel must be sterile means the gel which we introduce in our eyes that must be sterile because it is a very sensitive part so infection may causes so for that ophthalmic gel must be sterile the apparent viscosity or the gel strength increases with an increase in effective cross link density of the gel however a rise in temperature may increase or decrease the apparent viscosity depending on the molecular interaction between the polymer and the solvent means viscosity of gel must be semi solid like it not be 
converted into liquid by increasing temperature or decreasing temperature means it must be apparently semi solid or viscosity must be maintained during the storage as well as during the preparation okay so these are the some properties of gel then with this point we complete the first point that is the gel what is gel and what are the properties of gel okay then we move towards the next slide that is inhalation preparation so inhalation preparation it is nothing but we know that the ast asthmatic patient they use this such a types of inhalers they inhale uh, the air or vapors from this side so this is nothing but the inhaler pump so we discuss what is inhalation preparation this inhalation preparation are liquid or the solid doses form intended for the administration as a vapor or a aerosol to the lung in order to obtain the local or systematic effect hmm? means it is in the form of solid or liquid and when we intended uh, for the administration with the help of this way then it is enter in the form of vapors or aerosol into our lung directly come in contact with our lung and they produce a systematic effect okay they contain a solution or a dispersion of one or more active ingredients which may be dissolved or dispersed in a suitable vehicle okay means uh, solution or dispersion it may contain one or more active ingredients and they are dissolved in suitable vehicle okay inhalation preparation contain a propellants and diluents antimicrobial agent solubilizing and stabilizing agent etc depending on the type of preparation these are there okay they are available in single dose or multi dose containers inhalation preparation intended to be administered as a aerosol generally they are intended in the administered as a aerosol this aerosol it is nothing but the dispersion of a solid or liquid particles of active ingredients in the form of gas that is nothing but the aerosol are these aerosols are administered by pressurized meter dose inhaler or by the powder inhaler these are pressurized ithe here the with the help of pressure this aerosols are released through this uh, part and they directly enter into the lungs okay in this way the inhalation preparations is there how the storage and labeling are there for this inhalation preparation that is given here in the storage avoid the storage under extreme of temperature and in an environment with undue fluctuation in the temperature means a proper temperature range is given for the storage labeling the label state in that the name of the active ingredient means whatever active ingredient is present that must be mentioned on the label and along with that uh, we also mention the amount of that active ingredients okay means suppose in the paracetamol tablet uh, it is given paracetamol is 250 mg like that here also the active ingredient which is present in that inhaler it must be mentioned on the label as well as the how much quantity of that active ingredient is there that is also mentioned on the label the total amount of this active ingredient in the container expect except in the case of meter dose preparation for the inhalation that the container should be shaken before use it is also given on the labeling a container should be shaken on before use the other instruction for the use the date after which the preparation is not intended to be used means the expiry date is also given on that labeling the condition under which it should be stored means how much temperature range is required for the storage that is also mentioned on the label a warning that the warning that 
the container is under pressure and that it must not be punctured, broken or inserted, incinerated even when apparently empty. Okay, so pressure is there. By, by applying the pressure, the aerosols are released. That's why it uh, not be punctured, broken. Uh, that warning it is given on the labeling. Also, the statement is given, keep away from the children. Okay, this is the storage and labeling of this inhalation preparation. Then the next point, uh, next slide is, in the case of meter dose aerosol and pressurized meter dose inhalers, the label state in addition, in addition what is also there, the total number of deliveries available for the container, the amount of active ingredients released each time of the fall is acquitted. In the case of dry powder inhaler, the label on the container state are the date after which the dry powder inhaler is not intended to be used means when uh, the inhalers which are containing dry powder at that time they on that label it is given this dry powder inhaler it is not intended to use after this date okay the condition under which the powder for inhalation should be stored uh, where the powder for inhalation is supplied in a capsule the label also state the quantity of the active ingredients contained in each capsule that the capsules are intended for the use in an inhaler and are not to be swallowed okay so when the dry powder inhalers are there at that time these uh, are the points are mentioned on the labeling and if this meter dose aerosol or Pressurized metal dose aerosol uh, dose inhalers are there. These uh, points are mentioned on the labeling. Okay, this is about the inhaler preparation. Then the next point is uniformity of delivered dose. Here, the delivered dose is the dose delivered from the inhaler to the patient. The meter dose is determined by adding the amount of deposited on the inhaler device to the delivered dose. It may be also be determined directly. The test is applicable to the inhalation preparation containing the drug formulation. For example, the solution suspension or in the form of powder. Either in the reservoir or in the pre-meter dose unit and for the drug formulation packed in the reservoir or in the permitted dose unit where these containers are labeled for the use with the name inhalation device okay means how the inhalers are prepared what is the uniformity uh, delivered during this dose that is given here okay so this is about the inhalation preparation and uniformity of the delivered dose so, in the today's lecture, we have seen the gel, definition of gel, then properties of gel. This part we have seen in this lecture. After that, what is inhalers, inhalation preparation, uniformities in the dose form, that part we have discussed in the today's lecture. Now, in the next lecture, we are going to discuss the remaining point of this chapter. Okay. Thank you.